everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to recommend some things based on the new prompts from Nonfiction November for 2021. I did this last year and it seemed like it was pretty well received and people liked it, so I thought I would do it again. I tried to challenge myself to pick books that I haven't talked about in a while or that I don't mention very often on my channel. So the themes are always words and they are this year industry, collection, treatment, and style. First, let's go through collection. So for collection, I'm mostly focused on essay collections. One that I recommend that you check out is A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott. Um, this is a book that really took over my life when I read it last year. It was just so smart. This focuses a lot on different kinds of social issues. She talks a lot about like food insecurity and poverty, and she talks about extrajudicial murders of indigenous people. In Canada, every essay that I read, I was just really, really impressed. I also love the Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo Villavicencio. I feel like this one is a little bit more uh, in the middle where like some people might like it and some people might not like it but I really love this one because of the way that it talked about immigrants and in a way that I saw sometimes like my father in it especially the last essay was like really really beautiful um, and she talks about her own relationship with her father but she also just gets to know a lot of different types of immigrants across the United States and their stories. She he stays with someone who's like a, an asylum seeker that's in a church since that's like a refuge spot. She also focuses on immigrants who were at Ground Zero during 9-11 and helped clean up the site and how they never got any of the benefits as a result of their valiant effort to help clean up the area like a lot of first responders did. She also talks about how immigrants sometimes use alternative medicines as well because they are not able to get insurance even though they can pay for it. There are a lot of essays in here that really opened my mind um, to a lot of experiences that I didn't know about but also in a way there were really relatable moments to me and my experience as well. She's very kind of in your face and blunt and I feel like some people might not like that. And then the last one that I wanted to mention for collection is American Cult and this one is actually a graphic nonfiction essay collection so it's all illustrated and it's also cool because all of it are by different illustrators so every chapter that you're every essay that you're looking at is by a whole different person there's a lot in here for you to kind of discover what kind of styles you like when it comes to graphic works I really enjoyed this it looks into all different kinds of cults that have prospered in the United States and it does go chronologically so it starts kind of in the 1700s and then up to kind of today. I loved in here too in the beginning when she's talking about like what the main goal is of this collection is not to kind of praise or like put these people on a pedestal um, but it's also not to tear them down because a lot of the people that end up joining cults they are joining them for reasons of something that's going on in their own personal life and they feel like this could save them. So for the next one let's talk about style. The first one is called Larger Than Life, a history of boy bands from NKOTB, New Kids on the Block to BTS. I put it in style because it is so different from a typical non-fiction book. It is very lighthearted and fun. It feels easy and it goes down nice and easy. I would recommend this to people who have read Paperback Crush and liked it. It has that same style of uh, different chapters that look into boy bands uh, with lots of pictures and illustrations and kind of asides. I did learn quite a few things while reading this. I think my favorite chapters, which I didn't necessarily think I would like, was about the Jonas Brothers. I really learned a lot because as someone who grew up in that time period and like was their target audience, I was never really into them. It did teach me a lot about like the culture that they were existing in when it came to like purity rings. We get a whole chapter about One Direction, which I did, I was super into. But then also just learning a lot about the the boy bands who started all of this, so like New Kids on the Block, Backstreet Boys, and NSYNC, and that was also really fascinating. I think the only kind of downside to this book that I've really read is that it doesn't focus as much on non-white boy bands, and she does mention a lot about um, like Motown and R&B bands, and also BTS at the end, but I do think that is a valid criticism of this book. For style, I also wanted to mention a book that you probably all read or heard of but I wanted to mention because it fits this theme so perfectly and that's In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This I chose for style because of the way that it is structured. It is a book unlike any other that I've ever read in the way that it uses like literary uh, motifs and like symbolism and literary devices to tell the story of this toxic relationship. I really really valued my time reading this book. It was one of those books that was really gripping where like you wanted to keep reading but also at the same time one of those books where you were really sad reading it. And then the other book that I wanted to mention for style was another book that's kind of 
weirdly put together and that's Savage Appetites for True Stories of Women, Crime and Obsession. This is kind of like an essay collection so it could work for that as well. It fits better in style because of how um, this idea of true crime and how true crime has really taken over popular culture and popular media and so the author focuses on four true stories. Those true stories are kind of the archetypes of many of the things that we witness in true crime media. So when we're consuming it we know about the victim, we know about the detective, we know about the killer. So these are the archetypes that we're kind of following in these four stories and they are messed up stories so when I read this I, I did feel like uncomfortable I did feel like I had like goosebumps especially in that last story there are definitely like mature themes in these stories but I did find it really cool how she took like these archetypes that we witness all the time in true crime in a way that's kind of like meta and discussed how they fit into these stories um, that she's telling that are true next let's do industries it was kind of harder to pick industry ones. First let's talk about Nomadland which is a book that I read recently. I picked it for industry because I found fascinating how this idea of like RV culture and camper culture has really become an industry and all of the ways that that group does intertwine and have to lean on industries to survive as well. So a lot of the book mentions for example working for the like National Park Service and also working for Amazon and just finding random odd jobs as you're moving along but it also focuses on this culture that 10-15 years ago was so tiny that everybody kind of knew each other to being this thing that's like really blowing up and changing and transforming especially when they celebrate they all get together one time during the year to kind of celebrate and share ideas and advice and how that has really like boomed into this ginormous collective now. This book really surprised me too with how much you feel like you get to know the characters and I think that the author did a great job at really putting herself into this culture and getting to know the people that firsthand are experiencing it. Then for um, industry, another one that I haven't mentioned in a long time but it's one of the first books that really got me into nonfiction is All the Truth is Out, The Week Politics Went Tabloid by Matt Bai. This looks into the industry of politics. I think this book Book shaped the way that I think about politics. It mostly focuses on the 1988 Democratic um, presidential nomination into the normal presidential election, particularly on Gary Hart and how he was kind of like this front runner that nobody could find any faults with and how during this time in the late 80s into the early 90s we were seeing this ginormous shift to basically being and following and digging and um, just like really being all up in politicians lives and how that wasn't the case before. There was a personal life for the politician and then like a professional life that was front-facing and those lines really got blurred and dismantled during the late 80s and especially during this election where this person Gary Hart that was built up to be the next president. So many scandals were found out about him and so much gossip spread about him and his personal life that had nothing to do with how he would actually lead a country but because of the way that we were all starting to consume media those those things, the personal and the professional, were just on top of each other. So this was really, really smart in the way that it talked about like technological advances, how the industry was changing when it came to how people discussed and talked about politics. The other one about industry is We Were Feminists Once, From Right Girl to Cover Girl, The Buying and Selling of a Political Movement. And this looks into how advertising and marketing and um, capitalism really has found itself into the feminist movement. This book I read quite a long time ago. I read in college, I want to say. It was one of those books that really made me think about how it was that I was consuming feminist media. Um, this was like the time when like, you know, Beyonce was coming on stage and was like shining bright like a feminist on behind her. I felt like a lot more artists were coming and saying that they were feminists. It was like a word that nobody said before. It really started to become something that in ways was hijacked. The movement was hijacked by artists 
popular culture there are a pros and cons to this because it meant that everyone was noticing that being a feminist is not like a bad word and that was a positive um, but it was also kind of diminishing the true meaning of feminism and equality and instead it was creating this like sanitized version of it I really valued my time reading that one and it was interesting to see like the faults of me and how I was doing sort of the same things and not really thinking more deeply about feminism and using it kind of like as a marker of who you are instead of like actually doing the work and the last word is treatment one that I read recently that I really thought was a great book was victim F from crime victims to suspects to survivors and this is a book that looks into how this couple was treated by the police who didn't believe them when it came to this home invasion case and kidnapping they thought that the couple was making it up to become famous how they have continued to fight to make sure that they get justice for what happened to them one person did end up going to prison for what happened to them but they believe that there were more people involved and it honestly seemed like a bigger situation like a bigger cover up or like a bigger conspiracy thing happening with the police department there are some very strange things in this book where like the people who are connected to the case are the police detectives investigating the case so that was kind of sketch I really enjoyed learning about the couple and how they have continued to deal with this trauma and continue to fight for themselves another book that I really thought was great was start by believing Larry Nassar's Crimes, The Institutions That Enabled Him and the Brave Women Who Stopped a Monster by John Barr and Dan Murphy. This book I listened to on audiobook in like two days. I was so into it. Not everything in here is like new information, but I really loved how it was structured in the book. So you could really follow the whole story together. And this came out a couple years ago, so a lot has happened since then. So maybe like it's not completely up to date, but I do find the case of Larry Nassar and um, all of the women that he hurt really just it enraptures me and it's something that I always want to keep up to date with what's happening because I feel so much for those girls and the women who for many decades suffered at the hands of this man and just thinking of like Simone Biles wanting to go to the Olympics and going through all the things that she went through she wasn't like mentally prepared to be at those Olympics but the reason why she wanted to go is to show people who had been through pain from Larry Nassar could make it through like they are survivors and she was still able to go to the Olympics again it taught me a lot about USA gymnastics and that organization and as well as like Michigan State kind of aspect of it and how the people who are heads of these institutions don't give a crap about these girls and women and they make me really upset and then the last one that I wanted to talk about is Destiny of the Republic for treatment and this one I want to talk about it because it is a tale of a medical treatment gone wrong this focuses on Andrew Garfield I always say Andrew Garfield <laughs> that's not his name James A Garfield why do I always say Andrew Garfield like the actor <laughs> And it focuses on his rags to riches stories to becoming the president, which in its own right is like really a fascinating story. I never really knew that much about him and I didn't really care about him. He wasn't like one of my favorite presidents, but his story of getting to the presidency is actually like one of the only rags to riches stories that I, I feel are genuine and that I believe in. It also focuses on his assassin and like what he was going through mentally to get there. Why I chose this for treatment is because of the medical treatment that happened after his assassin shot him. So James A. Garfield Field's bullet wound actually shouldn't have killed him but because of the way that people thought about germs and bacteria back then they didn't understand it very well they actually like introduced even more germs and bacteria into his body by trying to get the bullet out of his body and that medical treatment actually led to his death so it really talks about how medicine was working at that time and what people thought about it especially when it came to bullet wounds definitely recommend this book it's one of those narrative nonfiction books where you might not be as interested in this aspect of history or this person in history but the way that it is written is really engaging so that's it for my recommendations if you made it through this long video thank you so much i hope that you got some new recommendations and i hope that you have a great nonfiction november thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next video bye bye